Hi, let's have a look at Bitcoin again. Let's look at on-chain data, as in what kind of transactions are happening on the Bitcoin blockchain. And let's derive from that data how solid the current floor is. Are we likely going to fall again or is this potentially the start of another rally? Now, in order to answer this question, we will look at the Glassnode newsletter. Glassnode brings out a weekly newsletter. Link is also in the video description. And in there, we find various interesting graphs. And the first thing we can start with is the realized price distribution. Or in other words, at what price has Bitcoin moved the last time? So here at the x-axis, we've got various prices. And on the y-axis, we've got the number of Bitcoin. And so we can see currently around one quarter of all of supply is basically in the losses, right? These people, they bought over here at these prices and currently Bitcoin is around here. So these are all holdings in the losses. These are all holdings in the profits. And I find it also interesting to simply look at this distribution, right? There are people that are in massive profits that bought at $1,000 or at $5,000 or at $10,000. And then there's a few starting from around 30K that are in slight profits. But this area over here is smaller than the area over here. So more people right now are in losses compared to in profits, at least when we look at this range over here, this range that starts at 30K. Now, what caused this recent rally? Was this short liquidations? Was this speculative money that was betting on falling prices and that then had to close their positions? Now, this graph looks a little bit confusing, right? But bear with me. In light gray over here, we see the Bitcoin price. And this starts in around April of last year. So we basically have the sideways trading range in here. And here, what we can see on the right is this recent rally. And so this green red line over here is the net liquidation. Or in other words, when this line here is very low, a lot of shorts have been liquidated. When this line is very high, a lot of longs have been liquidated. And so sometimes what is here indicated with these black arrows, we get rallies and they are triggered by short liquidations. So people bet on falling prices, the market went against them. And so they had to cover their losses. And when you cover your losses, when you're short, it means you basically have to buy, right? You take on a loan, you hope you can pay back that loan for a lower price. This doesn't play out. And so you have to pay back that loan. You have to buy the asset causing the price to rise. And so this happened in the past. This time, however, with this current rally, we don't see that happening. So the short liquidation here is really relatively low compared to what we've seen here in October of last year or in July of last year. So the cause of this rally is not short liquidations. Another graph, but the same message. Again, we've got the price here in black and in red, we've got the change, the daily change of futures open interest. So that's basically derivatives, right? When the open interest crashes, when it goes down very rapidly, that's a deleveraging event. That's derivative positions getting closed. And so that happened over here when we went down fairly quickly. So that's long positions being closed. It also happened over here in July when we went up very quickly. So that's short positions being closed. And so whenever we have very drastic movements, we see deleveraging. People have to cover their levered derivatives. And so right now with this recent rally, we don't see that, right? Just a different representation, but the same message. This rally is not caused by forced buying. There's more charts to come, but if you so far like this kind of content and you want to help this channel grow, please give this a thumbs up. YouTube will then show this video to a new audience. Thank you. Now the question is, are we currently in a heated situation? In other words, are the active traders likely going to sell in this recent rally? And to find that out, in order to assess the situation, we've got the short-term losses and gains. And when we are very, very low on the short-term losses, we might turn around, right? Because there might have been liquidations. When we are very, very high, we also might at least for a few days see some kind of a retracement. Right now, in this moment in time, we are not very extended into either direction. The way I interpret this is that there's no real risk from short-term traders to move anything around here. I interpret this as this is likely being caused by long-term DCAing, by long-term accumulation. And so simply just following this metric, it doesn't necessarily look like this momentum, this bullish momentum is going to turn around into the negative again. But of course, nobody can read the future, but simply looking at this indicator, we don't see anything heated right now.
Now, here's a chart from this Glassnode newsletter that I don't really like that much. And that's the rolling returns of Bitcoin. So the monthly rolling returns. So what this does is basically it just looks at the price today versus the price one month ago. And how has that changed? So that's here in blue. And simply by nature of this calculation, this indicator has to oscillate around zero, right? Sometimes we are extended, then we might stay at that level. And then simply by being at that heightened level for one month, this indicator will go back to zero. Now I've done a separate backtest on this. You might want to check out old videos on this channel where I tried to find out is there some kind of correlation between prior returns and future returns for different time frames. So say, is there a correlation of the return of last month to the return of next month or for the return of last week to the return of next week? And the correlation is comparatively weak. What this here indicates is that when we are very extended to either side that we might have some kind of negative correlation, right? We crash, we might want to buy, we go up, we might want to sell. But really when you look at this mathematically and you try to find a proper trading model, this is not really working. There's no strong connection between the returns in the past and the returns in the future. It's not as simple. And so whenever you see something like this, a rolling return graph, don't overinterpret this, rather take this with some skepticism. I kept this chart in this video though, just to let you know that these kind of charts are potentially more noise than they provide information. We do have a very valuable chart though, and that's the metric how active Bitcoin's trading currently is. So we can see in a bear market, nobody's interested in Bitcoin, less and less coins move around. Then we've got a sudden crash. Suddenly people trade it actively again. The same is true when we've got a rally, right? People actively trade. But when we have potential sidewards movements, the activity tends to go down, right? It's simply just people that dollar cost average into Bitcoin. And so I find this interesting, right? Whenever we are in a bull market and this shoots up, we might want to potentially sell, right? We sell into the bull market and when interest declines, that's when we want to potentially buy. It doesn't mean we can't see some kind of correction, right? This year was another 50% down. But still, just when we look at this long term, it does seem to make sense to simply continue buying, continue dollar cost averaging when there's less and less eyes, less and less activity on Bitcoin. And that's the current situation here, right? And what does this tell us? Over time, when we are accumulating, we are restricting the supply more and more, right? And the longer this happens, the less active Bitcoin gets, the more potential we have to create another rally. But this can take time, right? This accumulation phase over here, it took one and a half years roughly. So far, we've only got half a year. So nobody has a crystal ball, right? But better be prepared. It might take another year or so until we really see such kind of a parabolic rally again, which in the end might not even be bad, right? If you're regularly buying, if you're dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin, every month you buy a little bit, then having prices that are not yet inflated, that are not above 100K is exactly what you want, right? You want to have as much time as possible to continue accumulating. So don't be disappointed that Bitcoin isn't going through the roof right now. The longer it doesn't, the better it potentially is. In case you don't know this yet, you might want to go to DCA BTC, so dollar cost average Bitcoin. And in here you can simulate what kind of net position you have after buying, say for example, a thousand dollars every month. You do this for say two years and historically after those two years, if we just assume that history is any indication, you would currently be at 78,000. And of course, Bitcoin is likely going to have diminishing returns in the future, right? It's nowadays way larger than it was two, three or four years ago. So you can't necessarily take these numbers to the bank. You have to give some kind of a discount from this number, but still it gives a rough idea. If you simply just buy monthly for a certain amount over a prolonged period of time, then you're setting yourself up that for the next bull run, you're properly invested and you can make the real returns. If you enjoyed this content, you're probably also going to like the premium membership content to be found at thebitcoinstrategy.com. Link is also in the video description. We've got daily market updates around Bitcoin, around Ethereum, around altcoins. We've got tutorials on how to read blockchain data, for example, and of course, a private chat where you can ask me any questions. If you haven't yet, feel free to subscribe as well. 
Last but not least, we've also got a public Telegram group. Simply search for that Bitcoin strategy channel within the Telegram app. Be careful though, there are scammers. They will directly message you once you join over here. That's not me. Those are people that want to take away your crypto that don't have your best interest in mind. So simply block anybody that directly messages you and be very careful with Telegram. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.